Enrique, you call yourself an explorer, but there are no more white spots on our world. Uh, what are you trying to do? There are many unknown spots still in our planet. The ocean is about 70% of it, and most of the deep ocean is still unexplored. We have explored well only 5% of the ocean, but still, even on the surface, there are all these places, these remote islands in the middle of the ocean that are still uninhabited and pristine. And these are the places I'm after. Okay. But then once you have dis discovered these white spots uh, and you have published them in National Geographic, um, aren't you the guy who is then getting all the tourists to these places? These places are very remote and this is why they are still healthy, right? Their remote locations have saved them from humans. But we are at a point where our footprint is global. You know? There are fishing boats everywhere. So there are not really remote islands anymore. There are fishing fleets from some Asian and European countries that are starting to fish around these areas. So we need to save them before it's too late. And in my opinion, if we are able to bring tourists to appreciate these places, to see these places, to enjoy them without touching anything, you know, this is going to save the places. This is, it, I would prefer to have a place with lots of tourists than with lots of fishing. Okay, oh, very interesting. So you're really saying tourism will help? Absolutely. Tourism has helped to save many uh, national parks on land. And tourism is one of the great solutions for saving these last wild places in the ocean. Okay. The, la the last trip um, you published was a trip to Pitcairn Island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Um, what was, uh, when you did this expedition, what was your major setback? And what was the highlight of this uh, expedition? Yeah, sometimes things don't happen according to the plan. And we planned to go to Pitcairn Island in March, expecting great weather, sunny skies, and calm seas. In contrast, we found the worst rain and the worst storms in the last century. There, it rained so much that a huge part of the island um, slid down to the ocean. So there was this runoff, there was this hail of murky water all around the island. So after months and months of preparation, we get to the island and we see this muck. And I was totally devastated, totally devastated. You know, I, we spend so much time and resources to come here and now we cannot dive, we cannot see anything. So we decided to try a little deeper. And beyond that halo of um, murky water, we found a deep coral reef that was unknown to date. It was very, very healthy with cor corals covering half of the bottom that went much deeper than we ever thought coral reefs we, uh, would grow. So thanks to that first setback, we made uh, an unexpected discovery, which means that you know, if you really want to succeed as an explorer, you need to be flexible and you need to be able to improvise and just go and try to see what's beyond the next mountain. So there are adventures left in the undersea world. Um, let me ask you three questions uh, I always ask every diver I talk to. First question would be, what is your favorite dive destination, the, the place you like the most? Yeah, the, it's difficult. There are so many places that I really enjoy, but probably my favorite place is Millennium Atoll. It belongs to Kiribati. It's in the Southern Line Islands uh, between the equator and French Polynesia. And it's a pristine coral atoll with no humans, no fishing, turquoise lagoon, paved with giant clams. You can find 20, 30 giant clams per square meter. And on the, on the reef, you have healthy corals as far as the eye can see. And in one dive, you can, you can see 75 uh, different sharks. It's, to me, it's the, the paradigm of what a pristine reef uh, is like. Talking of sharks, talking of animals, which is the animal you would like to meet underwater? This one, the humbug <laughs> whale. Okay. <laughs> the humbug whale. I have seen them on the surface, but I would love to have this experience of being in the blue with this giant animal that sings. You know, and, and I've been in the water and I have heard the, the songs of the humbug whale, and your entire body vibrates with those songs. 
and and I've seen videos of these animals being really curious and getting close to humans. So to me, this would be uh, one of the most spiritual experiences that one can have. Okay, and if I'm not asking for an animal, if I ask for for a human, living or dead, which would be your dive buddy? Oh. <laughs> Well, you know, I was inspired by Jacques Cousteau since I was a little kid, so I w really would have loved to dive with Jacques Cousteau. But somebody who people don't think about so much when it comes to the ocean, you know, I would have loved to dive with Charles Darwin and see his reaction, you know, because he never dove. He collected some marine animals, but he never put his head underwater. So being able to dive with Charles Darwin and then discuss with him, I think that would have been pretty amazing.